Welcome back guys to this tutorial on how to use Autodesk Fusion 360. My name is Abhiyaj Amadagni and today let's first start off with the problem we faced in the previous episode. Now in the last one if you remember we made a fillet over here and we tried to repeat that fillet uh, using the circular pattern but it didn't work so I found a way around it. Uh, we can still use the circular pattern so let's just go to patterns circular pattern except this time instead of selecting features select faces um and just select this face and this face the axis is a circular pattern just select the green one there we go and let's make this 25. that should work and if that's all there make sure you press ok <coughs> um and that should compute it and we got it so now we have all of these features in place and we can move on to making the lid so for the lid what i want to do is i want to make a new component so let's just go ahead and click click on new component over there standard uh yeah parent make sure that this is selected the top body and let's call this lid press ok Yes, we want to activate it. Perfect. Now, what we can do is go over here, select this top face, and let's make a sketch on that because that's what we're gonna build our lid off of. Um, okay, so top. And what I want to do is we can get we can actually hide the main body and like hide the shot and the handle so we can only see the top. That'll be great. So, yeah, it's looking good. Okay. Okay, I see what's happening here. Okay, so basically what we want to do is we want to create a circle as big as this one outside, the outside layer over here. So what we can do first is we can project that upwards just to make it a little easier. So let's hit P on our computer, project, and let's like this geometry, this line right there. And what that does is, now it takes that line and projects it to where we're working. So that's exactly what we want. Press OK. Um, and then we have that, the purple line. So the purple line is what we need to work with. So using the purple line, I'm going to offset that by, uh, say, a millimeter. Or let's make it millimeters. And press OK. Now what I'm going to do is... I want to extrude this both upwards and downwards. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to select that, the outer uh, portion, and I'm going to extrude it two sides. But I'm doing this because I don't want it to be symmetrical, because we're going further down than we are going up. Um, let's move this down three millimeters. Uh, one second. Yep, three millimeters, four millimeters, four millimeters, and let's move the top up uh, two millimeters. Perfect. That's okay. And we've got ourselves a basic ring around it. That's perfect. That's exactly where we need to be. Now, let's create another sketch on top of this one. Um, and here, what I want to do is, I just want to create a circle. Right? You can just center it so it's easier to see. Yep, create a circle and just bring it out till that, till the outer layer. Press enter. And now I want to extrude everything up one millimeter. So it's like the inside and it's like the outside. And go up one millimeter. Now what's happened is we basically have like the covered area for the little, which is where we need to be. Um, and now what we can do is we can actually create a conic, uh, surface, or, con yeah, a conic surface. To do this, let's first create a sketch using this plane over here, right? Then center it like this. And the way we're going to do this is first I want to, um, create a line between that point and that point. So hit L on your keyboard. And let's just select that point, drag it out, and that one. Perfect. 
if you're dealing with some type of problem where you can't actually select points, that's probably because your snap feature is unticked. So make sure that's ticked and that'll help you out. Now let's go to creative and um, create and then hit conic curve. Now what you, what a conic curve does is it, you select two points like the line we just made. And then what you do is you get this, you basically select a point up here that'll show, that'll dictate how your curve looks like. So it's like a parabola, right? And you're just trying, trying to select the best shape for you in this case. So this seems about right, like over there. And what I can do is I can move this a little downwards to get a smoother curve. Okay. So there aren't really dimensions here. Or I'm not using dimensions here for simplicity, but just choose what seems right or what looks right to you. As to get that nice upper curve. Now for me, this seems pretty good. I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna say okay and hit enter on my keyboard. And that's looking good. So now I have a curve like this. And just to make things a little easier, I'm just gonna go L and just make a point from the top of that conic curve down to the surface. And you'll see why I'm doing this this in a minute. And I have that line. Press finish sketch. And now with that, what I can do is I can create a revolve. So I can select this profile, um, and then I can select this axis, right? And I and make sure and I now have 360 degrees selected, which is perfect for me. And make sure your operation is joined. Press OK. And perfect. That's all right. There's a little line here, but when you're rendering it, this line completely goes. It's perfectly fine. The reason I did the line in the little middle, in the middle section, is because I can get one component and extrude that 360 degrees. You could also have just left it as it is, but then if you were going to do that, you would have made sure you selected the axis to be that, um, the green line of the origin over there. Uh, and then you would make sure that your angle is 180 degrees and not 360 degrees, because obviously you have two portions, so you just need to move it around 180 degrees. If you do 360 degrees, it shouldn't be a problem. It's just that if you might face some overlap if it doesn't compute correctly and that won't uh, look good. And it won't help you in your 3D printing. So that seems right. That's perfect. Um, now, let's actually sketch the uh, handle for the lid. So how I'm gonna do that is, I again want to create a sketch on the same profile I just used. So create sketch. And make sure you're selecting the side profile. Now I'm gonna go to a left view and just zoom in. So if I'm gonna look at this right and then I want to make a lid somewhere here, I'm gonna press L on my keyboard and I'm just gonna approximate it to be somewhere around say here and move it across an equal distance. So that seems right. Um, yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, actually, let me just do that. So I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going eight, so I'll just go 16. And that looks better. So that's the horizontal profile for sketch. And then now what I can do is I can actually make an arc. Because I want to get like that the two arcs on either side. Let me just explain when I, by doing it. So I'm going to select um, a center point. Wait, let's see. Is there... Yeah, uh, let's select a, a tangent arc. So I'm going to select this point as a tangent and then I can just move it downwards like this. Right. And that seems fine. So what that does, it already puts the tangent feature there, so that'll work. And then I'm just going to select this, and if I remember correctly, it was exactly here. Perfect. So that's exactly where we need to be now. Um, now what I can do is, press escape on your keyboard, I can offset this entire curve to go to, to make sure, like, to basically create a 2D profile that's in between both the curves. So if I press O for offset, and I select this entire thing, I can drag this down a little bit and go say negative 0 0.5, oops, negative, and 
what this does is, if I press OK, I create another curve on the inside, which is exactly what I need to do. And to make this better and to actually create a 2D shape, I'm just going to hit L on my keyboard and just connect these two lines up. Um, then let's go here to the other side. Yep, perfect. And now you can see it's highlighted, which indicates it's a shape. So let's press escape and let's finish the sketch. Now, what you can see, how, as you can see, we have a curve that's slightly embedded into this, which is what we want because we want the lid to be joined onto this. Um, sorry, we want the handle to be joined onto this lid surface, which is why I, I intersected both surfaces together. And to like extrude this out and to actually make the lid, all I need to do is press extrude. I select that surface. Oops, no, zero. And it looks like symmetric because we want this to be the same on both sides. Drag this out uh, two millimeters. Perfect, that looks good. Yeah, two millimeters, or actually we can just go 1.5. Perfect, that looks better. Um, and make sure your operation is joined. Now you might get, it will initially be cut because you have an intersection. So its default setting would be if there's an intersection, it will cut through that surface. We don't want that, we want it to join. So let's press join and okay. And now we have our lid. Our lid is complete. Perfect. So now we can just focus on making the head and just animating the joint in relation to those joints as well. So we can create another motion link between those two joints. And in the next episode, I'll just be teaching you how to make the head using the sculpt environment. And after that, we'll be making the, the, the motion link between this and we're done. We just have maybe one or two components left and that's it. So anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.